And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sherrard Show. I'm your host, Sherrard, talking to some beautiful individuals about the topic, um, the ugly truth about the fashion industry. You know, and, and just before we went to commercial break, um, it was something you were seeing about this gentleman being a thespian, being yes. an author, being a janitor, being a hitman, all that. <laughs> just, just kind of like, being a great I got to clean up, too. <laughs> right. now, now, one thing that was fascinating about what you were seeing is, first of all, um, you're, you're, you're being a connoisseur on James Baldwin. Now, mm -hmm. the reason why I say this is because, you know, for me, I'm a connoisseur and Sam Cooke. Anything and everything uh, Sam Cooke, you can talk to me about him. And as a matter of fact, on our next episode, I'm going to be doing a bioptic about uh -huh. him and his life and career. Wow. So tell me, what got you so fascinated about James Baldwin? I met James Baldwin when I was a freshman at Morehouse College. Really? I was walking across the campus, mm -hmm. and uh, his eyes met mine. He said, you have eyes like mine. But I ran. Mm -hmm. I was young, didn't know what to do. I ran. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I did been, you know it was James Baldwin? You were I knew who I was running into. I'm going to tell you what was going on. The Wayne Williams case was going on at the time in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, so okay. he was there working for Playboy magazine. We knew that. And so, but the whole thing was, I was trying to get back for my curfew. So I was trying to be diligent. So I ran. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then after when I discovered what happened, I was like, dang, I could have had a longer talk. And then after wow. that, I started reading more Baldwin, came involved in Baldwin, and ended up doing a play about him in yeah. 2000. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. And, and it's, it's amazing to be able to cover something on a live, uh, somebody that's a living legend. Yeah. And to be able to have a bioptic about him as well. So now, in terms of you, Melissa, yeah. who is it that you um, really enjoy um, being able to have a fascinating, of, uh, you know, appreciation with? Is it Judy Pace? Is it... Uh, um, uh, actually... Is Maya Angelou, and I met her as a cub reporter when I was first starting out in the business, mm -hmm. and I was absolutely speechless and could not talk. It was like the most crazy thing. I was introduced to her. I reached out my hand, and nothing came out my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> nothing came out your mouth, and I ran. Yeah, <laughs> and it exactly. I mean, and you know what? That's all about. It is the the thing about that yeah. is, is that you you know who the person is, but in your mind, yeah. you didn't imagine that you would know that. I went to James Baldwin's house last summer. Yeah. All the way down. Never, to, never thought you'd ever be there, did you? All the way down to St. Paul, I got me a brick <laughs> and everything. You know, it's funny yeah. thing about it. So for example, like when I had uh, Judy Pace on the show, you know, yeah. everybody, every young guy had a crush on Judy yeah. Pace. You know, we're growing well, up. I they still crush, do. I have a crush on Judy Pace. <laughs> girls, too. I have a girl crush on Judy but, Pace. But she you is know, so beautiful. Absolutely. And then just have a wonderful, wonderful oh, personality right. as well. And the fact is that um, to be able to have her in a show, have Stevie Wonder stop by my show, mm -hmm. have the Rolling Stones have all these different people that you grew up listening to their music and they're there. That's one thing I really like when they told me about the fashion show you did. I had to call you immediately. Yeah. You know why? Yeah. Because you were honoring people that are still alive. Absolutely. Legends, and I love that. Absolutely. Now, what was really thrilling was meeting Richard Roundtree. I saw it. I saw it. And oh. Sh of Shaft. And, and I saw he was one of them when I walked the catwalk. Yes, correct? he did. Yeah. You, what people didn't know, I didn't realize he this. He was a model. He was a model. That's how he started his career. He started his modeling his career as an ebony fashion show correct. model no, he, correct. he was a um athlete and um they plucked him out they said hey good looking guy Come on, Come on out. And you know the funny thing about it, because I had Gloria Hendry on my show, oh, um, and then I had the Supremes on the show, and she was showing me come, some of her road uh, as being a model, and I saw her with a Richard Roundtree in a shot, you know, mm -hmm. Ebony. I'm like, okay, she was telling me. So yes. that's precisely right. But now, um, what is the next thing, big thing that you have coming up, Lisa, that you want to share with us? Oh, my God. So every month this summer I have not taken a vacation or anything the only I can only get as far as San Diego because I have family in San Diego mm -hmm. but then when I go to San Diego they want me to cook so <laughs> Wow. So I don't we're know going, that's a vacation. We're going to San, we're going to San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> right, we go. no, no. Spaghetti or what are you cooking? No, <laughs> no. No, they really love my macaroni and cheese because I do this whole macaroni and cheese with bacon on top. It's a, uh, I call it a heart attack on a plate. And like one of my nephews said, he was willing to die for it. <laughs> what? Wow. All now, right now, now. now, what do you make? usually make with it? I mean, green, short ribs. I mean, you know, whatever I'm in the mood for. Bad you stuff. Boy. So, so, um, so anyway, getting back to what's next. Uh -huh. What's next uh -huh. is the Lamert Park Book Fair uh -huh. that is going to be happening um, in the ball, the promenade of the Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Plaza, um, and. 
tons of books, tons of people, tons of authors. Kim Coles from Living Single Love her. is our book ambassador. So you should come on out and meet her. What's the date to this? The date is August the 19th, Saturday, August the 19th. From what time? And that's Saturday, in- August the 19th, Lemur Park Book Fair. And there ba- you go. <laughs> Plug in. In Baldwin Hills? In Baldwin, Baldwin Hills. Hills. Okay, excellent. Exactly. And, and for you, Charles, being a very busy man, now you shoot your show out here in L.A., correct? You know what? Our show has already completed our nine episodes. The deal is we are a tester show mm-hmm. that's been acquired to be on Centric because Centric is getting ready to rebrand to BET Her. Mm-hmm. So this is one of their first uh, scripted half an hour comedies that really? they're actually putting on. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. So we're the tester. So if you watch it, you like it, we'll get a second season. Oh, we're going to exactly. like it. Make sure you yeah. like it, ladies and gentlemen. And make leave sure some you comments. Yeah. Beauty and a baller. You know, don't be hating. I mean, yeah. I'm not Don't people. hate. Please. <laughs> please. So yeah. Let me tell you how to like us. You can like us by going to centrictv.com. And actually, you can see the first three episodes there. So you can uh, keep up with us. You can make your comments right there. And you can also catch us this Saturday night. And it's really cute. And it's pretty, I see that you had the, the late Tommy Ford. Talk to him about how it started off as a web series. Yeah, so we started this show as a web show mm-hmm. actually in 2009 uh, with only three characters. And my character had no lines when we first started. He's been uh, just in the kitchen. Huh? I, was, I actually wasn't even in the kitchen. Then. I was just running, bringing trays uh-huh. out like that. Um, and so basically, Michael Jagway is our, a fierce writer and he's also the producer director of the actual show. Um, so we took this little web show took and did 12 episodes. And after that, we went to a couple of festivals, started the LA Web Festival. There are about 25 web festivals around the country that deal with just internet web shows. And so after that, he got very adventurous. He said, you know what? I think this should be a TV show. So he did into a TV show, we got what's called a SAG after um, new media contract, which allows you to shoot up to 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. And we shot nine episodes in Calabasas about four years ago, and we just got acquisition. Tommy Ford, God rest his soul, right. um, will be in the next three episodes. It's, wow! Yeah. yeah, so this is actually his will be his last mm-hmm. particular work since he passed away exactly. in October. But he did this some years back. He had a recurring role. Uh, once we get picked up, don't know what's going to happen in that area. But every show is actually dedicated to Tommy. That's yeah. awesome. He's an awesome guy. Yeah. You know, and, and it's funny. It's awesome because, it, 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 you know, TV shows like yours and, um, you know, like Martin and things, don't you just love those classic sitcoms that we do? Oh, yes. You know, where yes. we just laughing at Sanford and exactly. Sons. Like I w- yes, no, like no. I wake up because, you know, when the um, Jamie Foxx show was on, I don't know where I was, but I never watched that show. Really? So, like, to see it now, yeah. it's so cute. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Living Color. I mean, I'm still going to yes. YouTube to see episodes of yeah. Living Color just looking at Wanda, you know. Yeah. It's, uh-huh. it's, it's absolutely really? hilarious. And he has an Academy Award now. Just yes. going to show you a Jim Carrey. Mm-hmm. All of those people people, they started these places. I think like the cast that we have, I say, um, what Michael did with our cast, he took uh, kind of like new folk, like myself, even though we might have been around a while, we consider it new, and he put us with some very seasoned people, mm-hmm. like the Judy Pace, who's coming back mm-hmm. into the business after being gone all these years, like Tommy Ford, mm-hmm. like Doreen Wilson is a part of our mm-hmm. cast wow. as well, and he's wow. also in another show as well called In the Cut, he's yeah. doing double time. Yeah. So, um, that, was what's, that was what's so wonderful about having these people all together. And the show that was actually fun, and I'm not saying just because I'm in it. It was actually fun to do. It was the right cast at the right mm-hmm. time. Really awesome. Yeah. So now, what next for you, Charles? What do you got? Going? Um, I do what's called the James Baldwin Literary Conversation Salons. It's kind of sort of a truncated version of the play where I go to colleges speaking around Baldwin. Uh, and now that the new Baldwin's film out called I'm Not Your Negro, there's a section that deals with the book. I deal with the Baldwin Kennedy Secret Meeting of 1963 that Baldwin had, um, and so I go around the country doing that. Um, I'm developing Developing actually another web show that I've been working on. That a friend of mine, we want to finish up that. Um, now, 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 your book. Tell us about what's the title the book, of your book. The book is called James Baldwin: A Sold on Fire. It is the play version mm-hmm. of the actual um, play. A lot of times, what people don't realize is that once a play goes to Broadway, you normally kind of sort of put it out there and it goes to Samuel French. Well, I decided to publish it independently mm-hmm. and I treat it like a regular book. So I go around having book signings because the playwright that wrote the play unfortunately died. So I, be- I got in charge of that. So I, I took care of the publishing. Mm-hmm. and did the editing, and I got David Leeming, Baldwin's biographer, to write the forward to the book. Wow, mm-hmm. that is awesome sauce. You know, um, you are doing big things, ladies and gentlemen. You just see what they're doing. It's just You always hear all this negative stuff about what African Americans are doing or not doing, but you see 
these two individuals have big, big things going. And it's very inspirational, I'm sure, to those who are watching right now. Because there's a lot of people that have this desire to want to be an author, be a thespian, be a spokesperson, uh, be a model. But they don't have that kind of model or role model to be able to push them over. Well, you got them right here, ladies and gentlemen. This man, BET, this young lady, is, um, she's just a, a big-time publicist and spokesperson. And the thing is that she there have a great positive attitude, and they haven't let success go through their head. Now, I'll, I'll throw it to you, uh, Willisa, first. Now, what kind of advice would you give to those young ladies or young men that are watching the show right now um, in terms of um, how you persevered in the industry? Oh, that's totally easy. For that second piece of advice that that lovely Jewish man gave me was... All anyone cares about in this town is how you is you winning. That's all anyone cares about. Winning. Now how you win is between you and the mirror. Ooh, I love it. I love so, it. So and I just always stay true to my um North Carolina roots. Cause I'm still excited, you know, I still get, you know, when I see actors and actresses and celebrities, I still get, you know, very celebrity happy and excited to see them because I'm also a big fan. Exactly. And once I stop being a fan, then it's time for me to do something else. You know I had a great interview with um <laughs> I once, I, once I start being starstruck, then it's time for me to do something else, because that means I am bored with this. You know, I had a, I had a really good interview with uh, Lou Gossett Jr. in Malibu a couple years ago. I've been to his house. And it's just and it's phenomenal. And I touched that Oscar. And it's it's awesome thing to have him. Yes. Um, you know, you see people on the show. You see people who have paved the way for us yes. mm -hmm. to come mm -hmm. out here and just to be able to give some words of advice. That's pretty um, phenomenal. And, Charles, I'll throw it to you before we go on our commercial break. Um, what kind of advice would you be able to give to uh, someone out there, young and old, young and old, black or white. You know what? James Baldwin once said, you don't tell life. Life tells you. Uh, it's more so about the journey for me and letting the journey be whatever it is. Everybody has a different roadmap mm -hmm. and don't be afraid to try all the different things and the bottom line is is that continue to go where your blood beats mm, awesome now you know we've all failed in life right yeah oh, we've yeah. all had our failures. oh absolutely but um i guess I, one of the biggest things that i was told before is never be afraid to fail right, right. you know and some of the greatest successes came from your failures absolutely yeah if you ever uh if, and i'll tell this to you all back home as well if you ever get google colonel sanders story uh-huh okay the fact that he even came out with KFC is a miracle because what he went through. KFC, really? Kentucky Fried Chicken didn't come around until he was like in his uh, mid-60s. Really? And hmm. it was um, it was a disaster uh -huh. of how it came about. He lost his job. He's about to commit suicide. His wife left oh him and all goodness. this stuff. And he failed so many times at it until it finally came to fruition way, way late in his life. Hmm. It just goes to show, you know, people like to see all that glory, but they don't know the real story. Yeah, and I will say something that a mentor said to me. Amongst all the no's, it only takes one yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, we come right back. We're going to have our final thoughts with these two uh, beautiful individuals um, regarding to their careers. And then we're also going to take your questions and comments oh my right goodness. after this. Q&A.